right. So, I, for purposes of the video, hi, welcome to Nursing 201. Um, it is not capturing your picture, just voices. Feel free to ask questions, okay? They won't know who you are, just me, I promise. <laughs> All right. But we are going to talk just a few minutes about um, NCLEX board exams. We're going to talk a little bit about where you are with that. Um, and how to be looking ahead. Just some good to know sites, uh, things to look at. Uh, we'll talk through uh, an API resource that I want you to take a look at, hopefully before you do lab tomorrow. And I also, we had talked about what labs are good to know, what lab values are good to know for your boards, as well as just for practice <laughs> and such. So that we'll talk about those pieces, all right? So, just so you know, we're having voice recording, all right? So don't let it surprise you. You will see video. I have video of this board, which will likely be my unfortunate face flashing in front for a couple minutes as well, um, but we'll put that up there. Okay, so the first thing that I think is good to know, NCSBN is the National Council State Board of Nursing. And NCSBN, I want to say it's .org, but NCSBN, National Council State Board of Nursing are the folks that write your test, your, your NCLEX exam. We also we refer to it as the board, but really it's, it's the NCLEX uh, RN that you'll be taking. You are still a semester off from taking that. However, there's no, nothing to say you can't start looking now, right? So what I'll do is while we're doing that, I'll pull up the slides and show you where I'm looking. <laughs> and we'll just take a second. Have you heard anything about the NCLEX so far? What have you heard? There's 75, all right. 75 is the minimum. What's the maximum number of questions? 265. Yeah, so you have a range. And how long do you have to take it? And it goes two ways. So there's two things. You have a total of six hours maximum to take that test. Some people use all six hours, most do not. It is not work. Okay, um, but that test is something that is driven by how you're doing on the questions. So if you do really well on the questions and they get harder and you do well on those questions, you have less questions, <laughs> right? As far as preparation, what have you heard is recommended as far as how do you prepare for your boards? Review, Review and a, do, are you guys doing that? Yes, you're automatically doing that. There's an ATI live review three day um, at around graduation time for every student. You, that's part of what you're paying ATI wise is for that live review and it's a good one because it's gonna take your stats, your collective class, areas of strengths and weaknesses and that's what they will come and do the review on, okay? So yes, they're doing everything but they'll focus on the areas of need. Do you recommend that or any other No. Here's why. First of all, it's three or four or five hundred dollars, right? The other is they're going to teach you different ways of thinking or different thought patterns for decision trees. I would not do both. You're going to get yourself confused. I, Kaplan's fine, but if you're already doing ATI, don't do ATI and Kaplan and this and that because now you're going to have too many techniques rolling through your brain. So I, I wouldn't do that. I would stick with what you have. Um, that would be my recommendation. It's just a three-day review, yeah, here on campus, um, and it will be for your group. So this is the N NCSBN website, open to the public, open to you, <laughs> and there's a variety of things that are here. You see the very first tab is NCLEX and other exams, and then you have everything from application before the exam, exam day, all of those kinds of things. Before the exam, you have a whole candidate bulletin, tells you the rules about taking the boards. You also have test plans. And what a wonderful thing to do this summer while you're waiting for your last semester of classes, right? Because your test plans, there's webinars, there's test plans. They change the site all the time, so I have to look at where to actually click for your test plans. But down here, 2013 test plan. Oh, it just didn't finish, too. Um, you have the basic, you have the detailed, and you have educator. That's just going to tell us more of the curriculum stuff. You want to stick to basic to get started. It's about 11 pages. And then candidate has about 56 pages of information for you about what is on your exam. Okay? I'm just going to show you the basic. But when you're looking through, this is one of the
the most important things that you're looking at for the purposes of the video. What we're looking at here is your categories that you're going to see on your NCLEX. I don't know how clear that's going to be on your video, but this has your percentage of what your questions will be. You know that management of care, 17 to 23 percent, so almost a quarter of your exam is management of care. What do you think is going to be under management of care? Maybe. Prioritization is going to be key. What else? What else is an RN? Infection control, that's 9 to 15%. PPE, right? Personal protective equipment. What are you doing for contact isolation, for airborne, for droplets? Knowing what diseases fall under what category and what do you wear, right? Those things that you learned in 170. <laughs> Bring them back forward, okay? Health promotion and maintenance, 6 to 12%. That's where a lot of the OBMP's content falls. Think about it vaccines, nutrition growth and development, meeting milestones, a lot of that is health promotion, right? So a lot of that is going to fall under that category, even the prenatal care. It's really health promotion. It's not care of, of sick, right? It's care of healthy. So that's where a lot of that content will lie. Psychosocial integrity is 6 to 12 percent. What's that one? Psych. And a lot of therapeutic communication, right? What do you say? What is the best response? I really like this question. <laughs> I find that it's hard for two groups of students. It's hard for the logical thinkers to say I might not go with the touchy feeling. What would you? What are you supposed to say? <laughs> right? Of course you would give them the facts. Well, the facts are a little harsh sometimes, so we have to soften it, right? And it's also hard for the ESL students or those that are used to another culture because they won't necessarily say the same things that we would anticipate. So sometimes those types of questions are a challenge, but. Not for all, and that's not universal. Psychosocial integrity, this combines these four categories. Psychosocial integrity is basic care and comfort, 6 to 12 percent. That's going to be where you get your, um, you want to overthink the questions, and you shouldn't, right? Basic care and comfort is doing things like side rails and hand washing and making sure that you're doing things safely. Even though you want to fix their cardiac arrhythmia, it might be that they need to sit up to breathe easier, right? So don't always go to the worst case scenario. This is what I would do because you've just read into the question, right? So basic care and comfort, 6 to 12 percent. Pharmacologic and parental therapies, med, med, med. What are you going to see medication-wise? What is it going to look like in your test question? You're going to have trade name, generic name, both. Primarily generic. It may have trade as well, but it will never be only trade. It may be only generic. That is what they are moving to, but they haven't taken out all the old questions. So old meaning just that it has old things. So what is Lincoln? We talked about it. The Rosen line, right? But what do we all call it? Okay. Uh, so making sure that you know the generic, which is going to be an important piece of this. And some of them are really hard. Can you know all men? If you studied a thousand meds every semester and memorized them, you would still not know all the medications there. So are you going to get there and get to questions that you go, oh, I have no idea what that medication is? Yeah, absolutely. But the question isn't asking you really about that medication. As long as you know it's a respiratory med, then you're going to look for a reason. Or if it's a cardiac med, you're going to take vital signs before you give it, right? Those kinds of things. So it, you're going to look for those categories that help you remember. The suffix of the meds is the important part, right? On a lot of those meds for the generics, it has OLs for your beta blockers, it has ZOLs for any of your antifungals, things like that. So you want to be remembering it that way. But the meds truly aren't med specific because there are more than 50,000 medications available. What about stuff like that? Can you have them? Well, Ab them? Absolutely. The, the um, estimation is that more than <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Not just for med-wise, but select yeah, all that apply. Then um, I'll talk you through another part of this. Pearson is the is Pearson View, uh, V 
UE is the group that does your exam, you can go look at the tutorial that you will see when you sit down on exam day at any point. And I would recommend you do that. You have to have a, a, our firewalls prevent me from showing you that, but you can do it at your home computer. But Pearson View, I'll write it. Pearson, and it's V-U-E. And really you can just Google it, but you're looking for the NCLEX tutorial. And that Pearson view talks you through the types of questions you will see. You will see hotspots where you have to click on the diagram. You will see exhibits where you click and there are additional pages of information, charts or tables. You will have those. You will have drop and drag and drop where you have questions that you need to put things in order of priority. And so you have all of those and you can try those questions on Pearson view so you won't be surprised day of. More, probably 10%, if not more, are going to be alternative style questions, meaning not one answer to a multiple choice question. So I have a question about priority. Research is doing, but one thing I'm literally doing is teaching the one. Yep. I don't like that. Like, I, have, I struggle with answering these questions because I'm like, well, I'm going to be doing all three of these things at one time. What would one person do first? Not a whole team. Right? But what would you need to do if you could pick one thing to do? Because, yeah, I know you're trying to do all three things at once, but you can't, especially for a test question, <laughs> right? Pick one. What is the priority? You're doing, if you're doing three things at once, they're all dependent on one thing. It might be the assessment. It might be notification, right? But whatever that one thing is that then leads you to, to be able to do the other two, that's your priority. So think about which one is dependent on something else happening first. That might help you figure out which is, needs to go first. Okay. Um, so select all the applies. Hate them, right? I want you to think of it like a true-false question. So you have six things that it might be, right? Six things in your A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever the case might be. Think of it that each one of them is a true-false question. Yes, it's all dependent on getting the right one in order to get that question right. But if you think of it as each individual one, is that a yes or a no? And then it makes it easier to break down. Because if you're looking at, well, it's this, so it's not this, you're reading into the question. So there are some times where the choices, and I actually have a few that we'll go through in practice today, but some of the choices um, contradict each other. So yeah, you can't have both of them be correct. But you don't want to say, well, this is right, so this one can't be. Look at them each as individual choices, that, like a true-false question. Okay, that might help on those. Good? All right. Um, let's go keep going. So farm and parental therapy. What is parental therapy? Mm -hmm. QC, right? Think of it in PTN, total parental nutrition, right? That's what I would say. What is Nora and you really love the endo? Oh, do we need to talk skills of practice? <laughs> yeah, okay. Talking meds. What can an RN do that an LPN can never do? IV push, right? So are you going to have some push questions? Absolutely. There are only two categories that are different on the test plan from PN to RN. Yes, some of the numbers are different, but it is coordinator of care, not management of care. There's not as much delegation and prioritization for the PNs. And this is pharmacologic therapy that doesn't have parental. So they, yes, they'll still have some IV meds, but that's about all. They're not going to have IV push. They're not going to have PTN. They're not going to have some of those other pieces, right? So you would expect to see this more so on the RN test plan. Reduction of risk potential, 9 to 15%. That is things like, well, there's a variety of things that it could be. So anything that's going to potentially cause side effects, right? Not talking meds, but what about your treatment? What about risk for falls? What about... Um, contagions, all those sorts of things. And then physiologic adaptation is your last 11 to 17 percent, and those are things like your pathophysiology, right? So out of all of this, about 11, or let's give it an average of 13 percent of your test is going to be medical conditions and knowing the patho or the, the actual process of that, which is why we're teaching you concept-based nursing, because this test is concept-based nursing. Real life is concept-based nursing. Right? That's the reason to get away from teaching you, just like there are 50,000 medications, and that's a, a true number, if not more, right? there are at least that many disease processes. So can you know all of those diseases? Nope, you can't. 
And so what are you going to do? You're going to use the concept of oxygenation to apply that to the different disease processes you come across. Okay? Good? Sorry, I'm making less here, not more scared, but it got very quiet in here. <laughs> um, on your detailed test plan, and I don't want to spend too much time on it because we have but on your detailed test plan, remember this is the generic one, right? But there are approximately two to three pages of bullet points of types of topics, not the details. You will have test questions on blah, 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 for each of these categories. So that detailed test plan will tell you the types of things that would be under management of care, the types of things that would be safety and infection control. You should not be surprised when you get to your board and go, I didn't know they were going to ask that kind of question. You have the plan. That is your blueprint. And you know that, you know, 75 to 265 questions in six hours, that's a long time. Right? The recommendation is that you do between 3,000 and 4,000 test questions before you go as preparation. If you do all of ATI, you're doing that. Right? That's why we put ATI as part of the program. It adds some of that thought process in, and it certainly adds some of that test taking ability and questions in. Okay? Anything else, question wise? We just, I want to put on this one just because we had talked about labs. You will not see a lot of integrate lab values on your boards. Why? Because you would look them up in a book, right? Should you know that hemoglobin A1C is for something? Yes. What's a hemoglobin A1C for? Diabetes, right? And it tells you how long? Three months. Three month window, yep, of what your uh, sugars have been. <laughs> so, should you know that? Yes. Are you likely to see a question that has that detail of a what is a normal hemoglobin A1C? Maybe because it's common. Seven is the high, right? We usually look between five. Yeah. Yeah. Six to seven is considered pre diabetic. Right? Or moderate control. Anything over seven? Poorly controlled diabetic. All right? 7.1. Nine. It doesn't matter. They're still poorly controlled diabetic. Is nine worse? Yes. <laughs> right? Then they're averaging that their sugars are 250 to 300, so that's your next year to know that. But what labs do you need to know? So we talked about, and I'll, I'll make copies and, and chop them, but really I just went to Google Image and did. Um, the Chem 7 diagram, this is, they call it a fishbone, and this is what it looks like until you fill in the values, and it looks like a fish skeleton, right? <laughs> so that's a fishbone. It might just help you to put the, your Chem 7 on a fishbone so that you know what your values are. Because yes, you should know the ranges, all right? So this one is always the same setup, and you will see some doctors still use this on a chart. Okay, so here are, here's your Chem 7. When somebody orders a Chem 7, a Chemistry 7, it's also called a BMC, a basic metabolic value. You might have seen it called that, right? Same thing. Sodium, potassium, chloride. What's your HBO3? Bicar, good job. BUN, creatinine, and glucose. It tells you a lot right there in those seven values, right? Rodney, important electrolyte. We don't use chloride a whole lot, but it's still part of the Chem 7, okay? <laughs> If we're adding 10, 10, we're adding additional um, measures as well. That can vary based on institution, but the Chem 7 doesn't. So these are your, your values, right? So should you know your, your normal ranges for each of those? Yes. What this one did, and just if you're a one number instead of a range person, it gave you the, the center point of the range. You know that the ranges are different based on institution or reference book, et cetera. But if you know the ballpark, what's the potassium in your bill? 3.5 to 5 or 5.5, right? Depending on what you're looking at. This one has it at 4.2 because it's in the middle, right? So this isn't telling you the range. This is the, the graphic I made uh, or pulled. I shouldn't say I made it. It's simply to give you a, a ballpark because knowing that sodium is in the 4 range instead of in the 140 range gets you somewhere, right? So I'll make copies of these and, and give them to all of you as well. So you will see these values on your boards and you need to know the normals for those, right? Um, the other one that we use a lot is for your 
uh, CBC. So what are your five most important things on a CBC? White, okay, so white blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, and? Okay, I'm going to put red blood cells on the side because hemoglobin, hematocrit answers to those already, and platelets. So that's your CBC in a nutshell. Right there, four values plus red blood cells off on the side of people. Okay, if they're on anticoagulant therapy, then you want to have your CT, CTT, INR, right? But that's still not part of your CBC. Um, red blood cells is off on the end, but platelets. So these, yeah, that's my doctor's purple. <laughs> I have it even though I don't have one for the degree. <laughs> um, but that, those are your CBC ranges, right? Or not ranges. Those are, are the things that you're going to most commonly see. Good? All right. There's my little soapbox for a few minutes so that you're, you have a plan going.